Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Not For Everyone. I was recently in New York. New York is awesome. So besides Broadway shows and the Knicks game, I also went to the Apple store. I wanted to buy the new Apple Watch Ultra. I did buy it. I ended up buying it. It's an awesome, awesome watch. But I realized that one of the most coolest things about the product itself was the packaging. Apple knows how to package the shit out of all of their products. So today, we thought we would talk a little bit about packaging, how to package your product, how to package your service, and make sure you're selling and selling a lot. Stay tuned. Okay, before I get into the details about packaging itself, I just want to give you a little bit of a bird's eye view on how we run communications here, how you should be running communications, and how does packaging fit into that. So whenever talking about any type of communications, it's always broken down into three main blocks, pre-purchase, purchase, post-purchase. Post so pre-purchase before they buy your product or service, purchase when they're buying your product or service, and then post-purchase, you know, after the fact. Pre-purchase, you're mainly driving purchase intent. That's the idea. You're not driving awareness. We don't like the word awareness anymore. Marketeers don't like that word. Uh, you know, awareness for the sake of awareness is dead in the 21st century. So you really want to be driving purchase intent. That's pre-purchase. When you move into purchase, so inside the store, you know, store, the hypothetical store that could be a website it could be a brick and mortar store so wherever they can actually wherever the point of sale is happening wherever they can actually buy your product there you're driving purchase intent but you're also driving purchase behavior so it's more than just it's it's click the button click on the buy now button right so it's the actual behavior you want to push and then post purchase mainly you're driving advocacy so you want people to be happy with your product and tell their friends about your product so you're driving advocacy so today we're going to be talking about purchase and packaging so we're moving into to the purchase. So when, when we're talking about any type of communication within that purchase area, you're talking about three main things. First and foremost, packaging. Second of all, inside the store communications. And then third can be potentially outside the store communications. Now, when again, when I say store, I mean store hypothetically, it could be the website or wherever your service is being sold. So let's start with packaging. The key here is that it's a bullseye strategy. You have to run it like a bullseye strategy. What does that mean? It means, well, we all have restrictions in terms of how much money we can spend on packaging or inside the store communications or outside the store communications. So when you're setting up your marketing budget, you need to spend all of the money on packaging first. All of the money. Spend as much as you have to to get the packaging right. Once again, packaging can be brick and mortar, something you see at a store. But it also could be your website, your interface, your app, whatever your app's interface is, the UX, UI. All of that would be part of your packaging. Uh, for a police force, it's the uniform. Uh, when you go into an Apple store, it's the t-shirts that they're wearing. All of that is relevant and all of that is part of the packaging. Make sure you get your packaging right. Once your packaging is perfect, if you have money left over, you move into inside the store communications. That's where you spend your budget. And then if you have money left over, then you can move outside of the walls. Why? Why do we use a bullseye effect? Well, the bullseye strategy is crucial because people make decisions at the point of purchase. Wherever they're making a decision to buy, that's when you need to spend the most money. Procter & Gamble has a really good way of phrasing this. They call it the FMOT. So the first moment of truth or the moment of truth. The moment of truth is the moment where a person takes your product or your service and actually buys it gives you credit card information if it's online gives you cash at the cash register if you know if it's in the shopping uh if it's in the shopping center or a mall or uh, then it's actually taking your product and putting it into the shopping cart that is the moment of truth the moment that they are deciding that they're going to spend money and they open up their wallet so obviously that moment is where you're going to make the most money. It's the low hanging fruit. It has the highest return on investment. You spend a dollar, you bring much more dollars back. Uh, there's a direct correlation between what you're spending and what's coming back. So you can track it and measure it, see if it's working, shift, change, adapt, etc. So it's crucial to be make sure that you're hitting the moment of truth. And the moment of truth, once again, is where they're spending money. That's where packaging comes into play. 
Now, packaging is important because we're also human beings. Human beings don't make emo- fun- functional decisions. We're not rational people. You know, we, we'd like to think we're rational, but but ultimately, if you're a human being, there's emotions involved in your decision making. You can't take out emotions out of the equation. So when we're talking about packaging, there's a couple of really cool examples I want to show. And, and one of the ones that blows my mind a lot is hair care. So if you if you're a woman and you're or a man and you're trying to, uh, you know, get a new hair color, you go into the supermarket and you're looking for, you know, a different hair color, red, blue, green, whatever it might be. Uh, and this is what you see. This is nuts for me. What, why does every single package look exactly the same? Different brands, uh, different price points, different colors, uh, different features. But every single packaging looks exactly the same. It's almost like it's a utility. I mean, I guess the only place that you don't really need much packaging might be utility. Like you turn on your faucet and the water just comes from the faucet. Um, But then it's hair care product. Why is this hair care aisle identical. This this looks ridiculous to me. I don't understand why there's no innovation in packaging in this industry, but I guess there should be or there will be soon. But again, this is an area where you're like, well, in this scenario, people aren't deciding the brand. They're not picking you. They're just picking the color they want. You just happen to be the brand that's carrying that color at that moment. And you should never allow for that to happen. They need to pick your brand first. And then from that, pick the color or pick the features that they're looking for. Definitely a big mistake. Another good example is this one. Uh, you know, you're, you're standing in the in the gas, uh, you know, pumping gas, and you're kind of just looking around. You're waiting. Was it two, three minutes? And you're just waiting, basically, f- for the gas to fill. You have nothing to do. You're just kind of bored. It's the bathroom effect. You're just standing there, you know, looking for anything to read. You can't be on your phone because mobile phone usage is not allowed at gas stations. So, you know, what do you do? You're just standing there, basically. You're looking for, like, the shampoo bottle to read, so that you have something to do just to pass the time where the gas is filling, but there's almost no communication. Why is there no communication? I mean, I'm ready to receive a message here. Why Why am I not receiving a message? And then when you go into the mini mart to pay for your gas, you're hit by this. Bam. It's thousands and thousands of pieces of, of communication have, have jammed your way. Well, wouldn't it be better to actually communicate before? and get that purchase intent before you come inside and drive purchase behavior. So again, packaging is crucial. Inside the store communications is very crucial. Another thing that we see a lot that happens is people don't realize and marketers don't realize that there's deselection before selection. And this is extremely, extremely important. How people decide what not to buy is more relevant than how people decide what to buy. The reason is because any human being goes through a deselection process in their head before they go through a selection process. Uh, If you're looking to buy bottled water, you go to the supermarket. In the supermarket, there's probably 30, 40 different brands of bottled water. There's probably each and probably four or five different SKUs, different sizes for each of those. So you probably have a decision of, you know, 150, 200 different products that you can buy just in bottled water. Now, when you're standing there, you're not seeing all 200. Nobody sees all 200. You see maybe, maybe, Maybe four or five, maybe four or five, but not more. So you're deselecting 195 choices out of the 200 right as you walk up to the aisle. That deselection process is very important because if you're part of that deselection, they won't even see you. You're completely, completely blocked out. So let's do a quick little exercise. If you guys know the answer to this, please keep it to yourselves. If you don't, please comment below. What I want to show is a little video for you. Now, please super, super focus on the video. You're going to see a bunch of people passing around a basketball. Uh, it'll be two, two groups of people and they're just passing around a basketball. It's multiple basketballs actually. So, so you really have to focus. What I want you to do is I want you to really focus on the passes. I want you to count how many times the people wearing white shirts pass the ball to each other. Okay, so once more, how many times do people in white shirts pass the ball to each other? So watch the video, count how many times white shirt people are passing the ball, and then write the answer in the comments below. Now again, it's multiple balls flying around, so please, please focus. All right, let's roll the video. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball.
How many passes did you count? Okay. So thanks for commenting below. Somebody said 15, somebody said 14, somebody said 16. The reality is that if you look at the video once more, just go back and watch it once more, what you probably didn't see is the giant ass gorilla walking in the screen, literally. Just take it step by step now, watch it again. Don't count the passes. There's a giant ass gorilla just walking, you know, pumping his chest and then leaving. Again, this proves that when people are focused on what they want to buy, they deselect everything else. So what I what I used to do and what I still do with my students is I, I take them out on these kind of field trips just to teach them a little bit more about marketing and packaging and inside the store communication. Uh, one of the exercises I love to do is I put a quarter on the floor of a supermarket and I put like a $5 bill sticking out from like the third aisle or on the top aisle there. Uh, we go walk around for 20 minutes. We come back. The quarter is always gone. The dollar is still sticking out. Why? Because when people are looking at the, the spaghetti aisle or the, the cola aisle or whichever aisle they're on, they're deselecting everything that they don't want to see. For them, a $5 bill sticking out of you know the, the spaghetti aisle, they're not looking for that and they're not focused on that. So once again, when it comes to packaging, you want to make sure you understand that as a deselection process first and then a selection process. You have to be in the frame of reference. You have to be on their radar screen in order for them to pick you up. So let's move a little bit more towards the tech industry, the SAS industry, you know, where we are, where, where I currently work and when operate. So for us, uh, a lot of the packaging is UX and UI. So it's the first time they come in. It's how many clicks does it take? This how many clicks is a key question for, for packaging for any SAS company. If you're a startup uh, and your main uh, source of revenue is going to be from an app or, or uh, a website, then it's how many clicks. Same goes for e-commerce. So from the moment I see something and I want it, the aha moment, like, <gasps> I want this or oh, this is great. From that moment until me putting my credit card information and actually pushing the buy now button, how many clicks away, okay? So for example, we realize that when I go to the pricing page uh, of any SAS, uh, the, the, the less, the amount of links that actually exist, the amount of things that are clickable needs to be extremely, extremely minimal. So when you go to the pricing page, there's three buy now buttons, one for each package, and that's the only thing that you can click. You can't even click on the logo to go back to the homepage. That makes sense. That is part of the packaging. So shortening the distance between the aha moments and the buying moment, the click moment, so how many clicks is very, very relevant. Uh, and I can bring a bunch of other examples from that. But again, the key here is that you want to get your packaging right. Spend all of your time all of your money, all of your resources on getting the packaging right, the moment of truth. Once you got that, then you can move it to inside the store and then you can think about possibly any type of outside the store communication. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Please help us out and hit that subscribe button. It only takes you two seconds, but it means the world to us. It helps us create more content like this. And uh, in the comments below, let me know if there's any specific topic for marketing or anything that you're interested in, and I'll make sure we research it and, and pump that out to you as quick as possible. See you next week.